Yo, what up? I can't really see who's on there. I can't get on. I was going to do live stream on my YouTube, but I can't because I don't have enough subscribers yet. So we're going to talk about it on here. And then hopefully what I can do is post the video on my YouTube. Because I woke up this. I wasn't going to talk about it, to be honest with you, because I was going to let everybody I didn't know, it. I saw like, like last night that someone had put like Dirk in them on one of those things and I I closed Facebook bro went to bed. Some of that shit disrespectful. I can't, it's like, I think doing a list is better than actually trying to do a Mount Rushmore. I think around, a Mount Rushmore, you have to, do, you have to do some shit bro to get there. Uh. I don't feel like the Mount Rushmore can be as specific as some of like the artists are now. Cause like, you know, I've been hearing a lot about Pooh Shiesty. You feel me? But uh I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and go basically into it. Yesterday they posted a picture that had Cole on the Mount on the Mount Rushmore. And when I read the original post, the original post was like 20, 2010 to 2020. So in the last decade. You feel me? And I know that everybody, I know that a lot of people have uh I don't a lot, I know a lot of people like Cole's music. I like Cole, some of Cole's music. Uh and I know that a lot of people are fans of Cole. But I don't think like when it comes to on the the you know the Mount Rushmore of a decade, I don't think that Cole, I don't think that Cole should be there. On And what I mean by that, I don't, I don't mean he sucks or he's garbage. And to be honest with you, I would probably put Cole as my number one next up for this thing. You feel me? For the Mount Rushmore. But I think that here in the last two years or so, two or three years or so, Cole has been more consistent to say. Um, and what I mean by that is he's always got good music. Don't get that twisted. You know what I'm saying? There might be some songs I just don't fuck with, but Cole doesn't make shitty music. Let's just be real. Um... But as far as his record in this 10 years, bro, someone said to me yesterday, all his albums with platinum. No, no, no. All his albums are platinum. Okay. So let's be real. Let's be realistic. I don't like all his albums with platinum. Like, first of all, like, stop talking about Cole like he in a Kanye or a Wayne or a Drake level. Like, his shit go platinum in two days or some shit. Okay. Like, I'm not here with that. Okay. Friday Night Lights went platinum. Okay. But that was also when Cole was above the water to me. Okay? It was when him and Drake first started out. They were both young guns. You feel me? They both had no... They had made no mistakes. They, they were flawless at the time. Okay? And as they went on, one went further than the other. Now, don't get it twisted. What Drake does is completely different than what, what J. Cole does. So you're ne you're, they were never going to go head to head all the way to the top. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is by accolade and by influence and by, by accolade and by influence. And the thing about it is, bro, is that Friday Night Lights went platinum. Born Center was kind of, okay, in, in, like, as your second album, 
that's really if you get a second album that's really where you start to push yourself as an artist if you i don't know if you guys know this i'm just saying in a in a in a, in a rollout you feel me i said they do i said they do i said they do two different things my guy you feel me they do two different things but cole has had first of all let me just go ahead and give you the, what the list should be okay let me go ahead and give you what the list should be it should be drake it should be Kendrick, it should be Nikki, and then it should probably be either, it should probably be Young Thug, it probably should be Young Thug. Now, people are going to go crazy when I say Young Thug. First of all, and I had to recheck myself yesterday because I knew I wasn't stupid. When What's Name was talking about, dude sold out Madison Square Garden, like, bro, I don't give a fuck if he sold out Madison Square Garden or not. Kanye sold out Master Square Garden wiping his ass. Michael Jackson sold out Master Square Garden standing there in his own wind. You think I give a damn about, you think I give a damn about Cole selling shit out? Kanye sold out Master Square Garden selling merch, nigga. Like, my niggas do other shit, bro. Cole is late. Like, when I, like, the niggas that I'm, I'm, I'm fuck with, bro, like, when you bring up accolades like that to me, bro, you gotta bring something better than that because I got niggas that do better shit than that, bro. You feel me? So I'm not here for that. And then he tried to tell me that, bruh, motherfucker went, uh, all his albums went platinum. Yes, all his albums are platinum, but they didn't go platinum as soon as he dropped, bro. You feel me? Stop this. Born Sinner didn't immediately go platinum like Friday Night Lights did. When he dropped the album after that, Born Sinner went platinum. Then the album after that kind of flared a little bit. King of Diamonds is the reason why that album went platinum. This nigga didn't just... Walk in the game, bro, and go platinum, go platinum, go platinum, bro. So get that shit out of here. Like, that's a mirage. It's called being a fanboy, okay? And 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 Nicki Minaj, bro, the fact that you all didn't put Nicki... I was in a chat yesterday looking at niggas telling me that, oh, Cole deserves it. Are you motherfucking kidding me over Nicki Minaj? That's so fucking disrespectful. This last 10 years has been about the whole female movement in, in rap. And, and you niggas didn't even put her on the list? All her albums went platinum. Now that's a real phrase. All her albums went platinum, bro. And there was a couple of them she wasn't rapping. She's on my twisted dark uh, fantasy, beautiful fantasy, rapping better than some of those men. And you niggas got the nerve to fix your lips and tell me that Cole, who has been inconsistent in and out, you niggas. You, the fan base has been saying, I want more music from Cole. I want this. I, you, know, you shouldn't even have to worry about that shit. You shouldn't even have to worry about that shit if that's your artist. That's why I be telling niggas, you be giving Cole excuses. You be giving him passes and excuses. Okay? Passes and excuses. The 90s Mount Rushmore is Big, Pac, J, and probably DMX. Okay? Nikki is there. All her albums, five. Six platinum. She can do it again right now. Worldwide tours. She, bro, stop it. She's not even in contention. To get on Mount Rushmore, bro, you have to have influence and music. And all the artists that I named did both. Okay? Cole didn't do both. AR just brought that up. I'm glad that he brought that up when he said Drake does radio. What's name doesn't do radio, so his music doesn't reach like that, bro. You have to do both to get to Mount Rushmore. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that Cole is shit. I'm saying, but to grab that spot, you have to have both. I might even put Nipsey Hussle up there because that nigga sold a $100 mixtape, bro. What are we talking about? We're talking about music and influence in the last 10 years. Who in the hell is Cole influence? Cole has picked up someone else's influence and ran with it, bro. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? That's realistic. Cole's music is good. Cole's albums are platinum right now. Cole is a good artist, but Cole has been inconsistent. There have been other artists that have not been inconsistent, have, have been hitter contenders every time they drop and every time they turn the corner, bro. And, to, and that, to me, deserves the respect of a Mount Rushmore. Cole is dope, but you just you like you can't throw him up there. I would rather throw Cole on this, this next decade's Mount Rushmore as number one because now he's got he's getting consistent. But it took him 15 or whatever years to do so in this game. It ain't about fanship, it ain't about all this other shit, bro. 
these other artists, bro, have had both sides of this. Young Thug started with, bro, before Young Thug, none of his, none of that, that type of music was even getting played on the radio. First of all, that's the number one thing about Young Thug. And I'm, I mean all the way back when he did the song Lifestyle with Rich Homie Kwan. What in the hell does Rich Homie, what in the hell does Cole have that's bigger than Lifestyle? What? And that's in the beginning. That's 20, or 2009 or 2010. That's in the beginning, bro. That's in the beginning. The Pink Print is a classic Nicki project. Just because you didn't listen to it doesn't mean you, but doesn't mean it wasn't there, bro. So I don't, I don't like that. I don't, I don't like uh, name six number, name six. I said Cole's albums are platinum, but Cole didn't roll out with platinum albums, bro. So don't put him in the same conversation as motherfucking Wayne and T.I. and Kanye and all these other niggas. He, he, the first album went platinum, Born Center went gold. He dropped the next album, which made the other one go platinum, bro. I'm not hearing all this crap. I looked the dates up yesterday. And I knew that from the fact because Cole has been inconsistent. That's my problem with Cole. Inconsistency. You are supposed to be the people's champ and your music. We be wondering where the fuck you are. You feel me? If you're supposed to be that guy, we don't wonder where the fuck you are. We don't do that. Name me somebody he's influenced in the last 10 years. Young Thug has influenced every damn act. From the last 10 years. Every new act. Young Thug had. You talking about it, he went platinum with no features. Bro who give a fuck if he went platinum with no features. You don't think Kanye could go platinum with no features. You don't think Jay Z could go platinum with no features. You don't think Drake could go platinum with no features. You don't think Future could go platinum with no features. You don't think Gucci Mane could go platinum with no features. You, you see the, the artist that I'm naming bro. I'm not hearing that accolade. That's fanboy shit, bro. Be real. He has not been consistent. He has not been consistent. Nicki Minaj has went platinum every time. She has worldwide tours. She sells out bigger arenas than Madison Square Garden because she can't fit in Madison Square Garden. Do you understand the levels that I'm talking about? Drake is, is artist of the decade, okay? Kendrick... J. Cole doesn't want no, no smoke with Kendrick. It's a complete landslide, okay? And then you put Nicki Minaj. This is the decade of female rap. Who is the best female rapper and by far the best female rapper? It's Nicki Minaj. Also by raps and by album accolades. And by accolades in itself. The Pink Print was a classic Nicki Minaj album. It was early 2000s. I, it's, not, it's not your typical rap album, bro, because she's a female. She did it differently than Queen Latifah and all these other girls that were a little bit more aggressive with rap. More man-like. You feel me? Young Ma can probably body Nicki Minaj. But you know what? She rapped like a man. And more men are entertained by what Nicki been do has been doing. That's the reason why Cardi and, and, and Meg and all these bitches... Got the ass out. Nikki influenced every female, every new female act that came out. Young Thug has influenced every new act from 2010 on. He influenced. And then on top of that, before Lifestyle, they weren't even letting that type of music on the real radio. They weren't even letting that. K Stylus and uh, Travis Porter. They were on certain radios, bro, but they weren't worldwide radio. Lifestyle was worldwide, bro. What does J. Cole have that's bigger than Lifestyle? You know Lifestyle. The reason you know Lifestyle is because it reached you. Do you understand? It reached everybody. That's what I'm saying. So that's one. And then after that, Cole, I mean, uh, Thug has influenced literally every new act. The Baby, The Baby, Nav, Gunna, Key, Young Boy. I, bruh, are you real?
What like what are we talking about? And you also know who gets another honorable mention behind J. Cole? Is old boy said future yesterday. But the thing about future was that Young Thug opened the door so futures trap bassy club shit could get played on mass radio, bro. You think if Thug didn't do uh uh Stoner and Lifestyle, and I forget the other song he did. Uh, every time I leave this club, I would be with two bitches. That I forget that song. I forget what the name of that song is. But after that, Future's rollout, Future's rollout came right after Thug. And then Future burnt out, but then Thug kept going. Barta Six and Jeffrey and Slime Season. And then Slime Season 2, bruh. Bruh, he had the whole, Thug just had the whole internet dancing, bruh. He had the artist of the decade dancing. You're telling me that Thug doesn't belong on the fucking Mount Rushmore? Are y'all crazy? That's disrespectful. Cole is dope. But the inconsistency gives him at default. 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 Come on, man. Like, bro, who? Bro, look. Okay, I'll, I'll give it to you like this. In the 90s, Big Pot JX. Okay? Honorable mentions, Puff. Well, Mace. <laughs> and then uh, our 2000s to 2010. Uh, Kanye, Wayne, Eminem, T.I. Honorable mention, 50 Cent. A big honorable mention. Okay? Uh, and Chameleonaire. 50 and Chameleonaire get honorable mentions in that. And then I'll probably go like Ludacris, you know, and so forth and so on. Uh, and then in this decade, bro, it's got it should be Drake, it should be Kendrick, it should be Nicki Minaj, and it should be Young Thug. And I think that J. Cole should be number one on the 2020s to, to, to the 2030s. I think that Cole should be number one because now he has consistency. And if we get that... uh. What's it called? The fall off? If we get that shit, bro, then you already know that's going to be classic. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not saying that Cole is shit, bro, but I think in the, if you're going to go by this time period, bro, you can, I, bro, who, like, Drake and Kendrick are easily the number ones off of, Drake has just got, what do he say? I got more hits than the Beatles. You feel me? He got, come on, bro. And then Kendrick, that's who Drake be running from. <laughs> you feel me? <clears throat> he be dodging. You feel me? Like on uh on Good Kid, they did that they did that old club slow song. <laughs> ah, they did that old club song. What's the name new? And Jay Z came on that remix. Ready? To, you see what I'm saying? See the difference? You know what I'm saying? Like Jay Z's coming to like let you know. All right, we want we gonna do this, but you know what I'm saying? Rock's in the building. You feel me? That's what he's going to say. A rock nation in the building. You feel me? Cole's dope, bro. Cole makes dope music. You know what I'm saying? He's a dope producer, too. But I don't I don't put him on this list off of inconsistency. You feel me? He, he gets an honorable mention, but, you know, with Future and, uh, you know, you can make a case for Kanye in this one. But I'm not even... You know what I'm saying? It, Kanye was too inconsistent. In the 2000s to the 2000s to 2010, no one could touch Kanye. You know what I'm saying? But it was a different game. Everybody ran their, everybody had their own time to do what they needed to do in the 2000s to the 2010s. In this era, it's been a lot about streams. And so I based this off of accolades, and influence 
Of course, if we're if we're talking about Mount Rushmore, they have the talent to be here. But what have they done with it? Drake, you know what I'm saying? That that was the greatest investment. Whoever paid that or made that, that was the greatest investment they've ever made in, in their life. Kendrick Lamar is Kendrick Lamar. It's, it's King Kendrick, okay? That's who Drake be running from. Nicki Minaj is Drake's little sister. They both came from, they both Wayne's kids, okay? So Wayne is a demon in himself. And these are his offspring, so you don't think, and they have the accolades for it, both sides. You feel me? And then I would go thug for the influence. And I would also associate thug around Wayne a little bit as well. You know what I'm saying? I, I still think thug is his own man, but I definitely think that, that there's, you know, there was some relationship that was going on early, you know, with thug and Wayne. And then I think the number one on the next Mount Rushmore bro should be Cole, if not being an honorable mention in this one. You know what I'm saying? Cause he's dope, bro. But like, come on, bro. Y'all, 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 y'all. Yesterday in that chat, bro, y'all had that shit submit, and I was just laughing, bro. Like, that's it's incredible how y'all just discredit people and they run. And 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 like, fuck Young Thug for real. But the Nicki Minaj disrespect, bro. I didn't like that shit, bro. Because. That showed me, bro, there was some serious fanboy shit going on, bro. Bro, you think I you think I sit around and listen to Nicki Minaj every day? No. But I, I remember how big a, bro, she was on Ellen, bro. She was on Ellen. Oh, man, what is that? Come on, man, what are we talking about? You can't. Oh, bro. <laughs> this is what we needed. Did you put in app in this conversation? Hey, AR. Is it not working? It's trying to add. It says adding. I don't know if it's going to work or not. Hold on. I'm trying to add you, bro. Peace, King. All right, now it says connected. Yo, what up? Peace, baby. How are you? I see you. I'm moving. I'm in this. I'm in this body. I'm here. I see. You. Okay, okay. Let me start off where you write at. We write. Let's start off where you write. Kanye should be on the list. If no, we talk. Start off where I'm wrong. Were you wrong? Yeah. Start off where I want. Where I'm wrong. The nineties. Nineties. Jake's not, not on the list, bro. And I'm a whole. Wait, is he on the 2000s list? All right, look. Jake came out in 96, right? Right. First joint didn't even go platinum. Second joint in my lifetime. That was critically panned. Nobody liked that. He didn't start popping to volume two. That's after Big and Pac died. That's 98, bro. That's 98. So we talking about the. So why can't he be. Go ahead. So. So who so who has so who has the influence from the nineties? In the nineties, that would were, were take his spot out from what we know. Bro, you gotta have because a, you, early nineties, you gotta have a southern artist early, on there, bro. Early nineties was early nineties was new underground. You gotta have a southern artist on there, bro. Who like like Pastor Troy or like Drama? From the nineties? No, nah, I'm talking. You gotta have like Master P. Yes. Bruh, the influence and culture, he shifted it, bruh. He was dropping albums every month. Every month. Who was doing that? Bruh, the niggas 21 just dropped the album last year, copying the whole cover art of the No Limit shit. Bruh, I would take Mystical. I would take Mystical over Master P. But, but but this is why I don't consider Master P, even though he was, because that's what he was. He was a rapper. Yeah. I had to get on dope. I'm, I understand I the business. He's more of a business but mogul I, now. Yeah, yeah. He was he was he was he was too much of the Don and too much. He was putting on everybody else because the True to the Game, the the No Limit Soldier song, I think had almost everybody on it, but except. 
But Master P's his whole business pro, his whole business prowess was not to be the favorite. He just wanted to be the boss, which is why he put everybody on. I'm saying just But I would look at Go ahead. I would look at Baby more as a rapper than than P. Who? Baby. Like baby I'm, I'm, about and off, I'm about to get off here. <laughs> don't don't, don't you rapper. do that. Don't you do that. Don't you get baby? What? I can't even say a baby bar. Master P has classic songs. Don't do that. Don't do that. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that he's a better rapper. I'm saying that when I look at them okay. from the 90s, I like Birdman, Birdman and Manny Fresh presented themselves as artists. Yep. Master P was just kind of like but that's, he, but that's, the way they presented themselves was a big group. So he was like, I'm the general in any video. But that's, he's the he's the big boss in every video. That's, he's the, that's my the whole, commander that's in my chief or whatever they did. That's my whole point. He but, changed but it. But I don't look at that as rap. He changed it, though. He changed it. He made it cool to be a boss and a rapper before you had to pick one. You had to pick but who, okay. But who was being a, but who was a, okay. Then who was being a boss and a rapper after that? Everybody. Jay. He started, but James, but you said, but, but, but that's but my, I'm saying but he right, gave the so blueprint. Put, he gave the blueprint, the mono, the mindset. Because, bro, right, but that, the, the East Coast but rappers. That's why I would put Jay in that spot because he took it, did the rap. He was a rapper, right? And did the ball shit, but he was a rapper. P, I still look at him, even though I, I forget he was a rapper. I still look at him as always being a boss. I don't take him as serious. He got classic songs, but I don't take him as serious as like rap. Like when I mean that, like rap. Like I think Jay Z took that, and that's why I feel like he was he deserved that spot. Okay, you know what I'm look, saying the look, early nineties you, you, was you, underground. I'll take that. I'll take that. I, I would put Q Tip in him in there. I'll take that. I would put Q Tip. Let, let's let's get to the current joint. Let's get to the current joint. The current list that got you. Okay, well then they, they got you triggered. Okay, well then I think that I I don't disagree with Cole being on a Mount Rushmore. I don't think he deserves to be on this one because of inconsistency. I think he needs to be on the 2010s. Well, this, I mean, or the 2020s to the 30s because in the last three years, King, four, all right, the mixtapes, the warm up, the come up. Can't count. We're not talking about mixtapes. So mixtapes don't count. Just albums. albums. Just albums. Yeah, we're going by. We're going by albums. Okay, albums. All right. For, uh, all of the, side, the sideline story. Uh, Born Center. Black. I like Born Center. Born, but but Born Center went gold. What's the next album after that? Four Hills. It went platinum, which made Born Center go platinum. Right. That's my thing. But it went. But hold up. It and went gold because what, other what, did, what day there, did it come out? They go platinum, bro. Chad, You're getting Chad, excuses. Chad, you too. You know too much music knowledge not to add context to certain things you be saying. Why did it go gold? What day did it come out? I don't come know. on, Mr. West. The same day that Jesus came out. That was the big thing. But Jesus is Kanye's worst album. I, bruh, I'm not arguing that. I'm saying the context is important of why it went and did the numbers it did. Mind you, the whole thing was he the whole thing was people were telling him to push his project. Jump platinum. Push it back. The reason why, but this is the, the reason why I don't put Kanye on that list on this new list is because of inconsistency. Jesus was inconsistent. Inconsistent. It was trash, but there's people who loved it. It was rushed. There's people who loved it. Was it was rushed. He tried to say it was. It's, it's it was a polarizing a, it was a riot project. And all this other crap, but like, bro, you was rushed. It was a pro. It's a polarizing it project. Either you hate it or love it. There's no in between with it. I like it because I'm a yay fan. Exactly. But, <laughs> but I'm not. I'm a realist. Exactly. I'm a realist. Exactly. It's shit compared. Uh, it's okay. Shit compared okay. to my twisted and life of Pablo. Okay. My problem is Nikki doesn't deserve to be on the list, bro. That's that's. That is that is an insult. I cannot what, have. What do you that. mean? That is that is so. What do you mean, bro? Because what? This decade was the decade of the female rapper. Okay. And Nikki not only did rap. She was. She put the numbers up mm -hmm. like men and rap like men. She was on the song with. She was on Monster. I, that monster verse. One, one of her best verse. That monster verse, her verse. and her accolades. Yep. Make her belong in a spot for this generation because Cardi B, Meg, Mulatto, Bad Baby, uh, My Little Sister. All got their life from Nikki. Everybody 
it was influence for Nikki. So she got the raps, she got the accolades, and she got the influence. This is that, this is where I push proud, back. And it was bigger than Cole. This is where I push back. Where I push back. Everybody you name on that, or everybody who's already on that, like photo, Drake, Kendrick, Cole, they've been tested in some form or fashion, right? And have have proven the Nikki didn't get tested. Whoa, whoa, when. Drake had bodies before he lost to Pusha. He beat he beat Common and he bodied Meek. We right? Okay. The fact that you put Common, did you brought the Common? He, he bodied Common. He bought that's that's the start. He did. That's the start of the 2010. State scheme and starts at the 2010. All right. So before he lost, <laughs> before he lost to Meek, to Pusha, he already had he already had reverence in that area. He already had the classic projects. He already had to impact the numbers, and he already tested himself in the arena of rap. Bruh, a rap is a contact sport. It's competitive. It's a contact sport. All right. Nobody's tried Kendrick, but him and Sean subbed at each other. Him and Drake have subbed at each other. So niggas kind of respect that. Cole is winning. Nah, Drake running. Huh? Drake running. Oh, yeah, he's running from that. He don't want that. Uh, Cole is taking shots at, at plenty of people. You know what I'm saying? bro? when Nikki had her challenge, bro. She tried to blackball Remy. That's that's a fact. That's not a and she got and she lost to Sheether. Sheether bodied her to the point she had them take it down. Take the song down. Then when Cardi came, brush, it's like instead of embracing Cardi, she butted heads and ultimately Cardi won because people can relate more to Cardi than they could to Nikki. So it's like that's the that's the number one thing. And the second thing is what's her classic project, bro? The pink grand. Name one. Her first two albums. Name one. Her first, two, her, first, her first two albums. Her first two albums were the ones Classics? that, that Classics. gave. No, no, yes. And I say this because those are because I don't put like when I when I talk about Nicki Minaj, of course, as a male, and it's no offense to females. Uh, so you say so you say I'm you can't really, relate to I'm it because she's a woman. For the women raps. No, no offense to females. I'm not really here for the women rap. Me personally. I understand you that. know what I'm saying? So I'm not looking at that. But more, but more I, but, but, a I classic. Noticed, but what I noticed was the first two, her first two albums. Right. Were like what Drake was doing. Like, okay, they, they were both still Wayne's kids at the time. Yep. And what Drake was doing musically, Nikki, there's no way that Nikki could do anything with that. You know what I'm saying? I, I understand so that. I'm Nikki not judging her on the herself. curve. I'm just saying, what's her classic project, like classic album? And you said Pink Print? I said the Pink, I said the pink Print. What's name one classic? What, what makes it classic, bro? What's one classic song off that? The, the Influence. Super Bass? That wasn't on Pink Print, was it? If I'm not mistaken, it was. I thought that was on the second up. joint. Because that's when she went like super commercial, right? No, she, both of them were super commercial, but that's my point. Right. That's what I was saying. Right. She couldn't beat she couldn't beat Drake musically with what the content he was getting. Right. I understand. So that. to even out the money, she went commercial, which created influence to like that made every female from then on want to put on a wig and mm -hmm. do that from here and still to this day. As I speak, like every guy, every girl got a lace front. There's a different color, and she's a mermaid. Little Kim started that. It's all go because ahead. of Nikki. Little Kim started that, but go ahead. No, Little Kim did it. It just Nikki it did just, it right. Nikki had a bigger platform. It was it was the internet back then when Kim was doing it. Bro, it was internet back then, bro. They just put stars on the titties. Kim was it? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I remember I'm I'm that old. It was just stars on the titties back then, bro. I'm that Stop old. Stop you that. <laughs> they did. Nah, nah. Like you, she was being sexual. Either, she was being over sexual. Look, look, look. Nikki wasn't coming out to be over sexual. Look. She was been coming out to be like a, a female superhero. That's what the first two albums were. Oh bro, anybody anybody will tell you that. She wasn't she wasn't over sexualized till she did Anaconda. No, that was her no, last. That was her last and, and attempt. Was that was her last all attempt, over. bro. That was her last ditch attempt. That wasn't no last ditch attempt. Okay, King. Okay. That's a, that's like that's like the Beyonce thing. Beyonce, 
was doing everything with her daddy. And then soon she let her daddy go. She so was out there on the beach. So wild with wild titties out mm -hmm. doing everything. But that's what Nikki did. She she got out of the commercial. She left it for a little bit. And the next thing she popped up was my anaconda. And then she had she was over sexualizing. All right. I don't think that was a last ditch attempt. I think she needed to do that in her bag. 20, if she didn't do that, she regretted. Twenty tens is Drake, Kendrick, Cole, and Future. Honorable mentions are Big Sean and Wale. Future's light burnt out in the early two thousands. Thugs still going. So, what is Future got bigger? What is Future got bigger than Lifestyle? Hold up! Hold up! Hold up! What What is Cole got bigger than Lifestyle? That's a single, bro. Exactly. You just gave me my point. That's a single. What? But my point is, if it wasn't for that song, the style of music that Rich Homie Quan made with K-Camp and uh, Travis Porter, that would have never hit radio worldwide. And then Future's style of club, bassy music, would have never been allowed on radio worldwide if it wasn't for Thug's style of music. Wow, Dirty Sprite 2 was out before that. But 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 thug but what but it's about who it's about who opens the door, bro. You can say who who came out with what first, but it's about who does it right. Bro, future opened the door is still opening doors. No, thug is the opening doors and has influenced every single new act from the 2010s until now. Really? Everybody, young boy, key, nav, gunna. Every new act. Okay, hey, and none of them, none of them, hey. none of them are bigger than Lil Uzi Vert. And who did Lil Uzi Vert do a tape with? And Uzi Vert, fuck with what? He, who did he do the tape with? He did a tape with Future. Because Future needs child support. Oh my god, bro, you listen? Did you did you listen to the album? Did you listen to the album? I know you listen to the album, right? You know that Uzi wrote all those songs. <laughs> you know that Uzi wrote all those songs and threw Future on there. You know that because you write music. Yeah, stop. That's yeah, stop it, man. He wrote yeah. the hooks and wrote the verses. And half the time, bro, they weren't even different hooks. They were the same hooks. He Future was repeating Uzi's hooks. They weren't even the same hook. They were, they, bro, if you're going to do me an album, you got to at least write different. Bro, come on, bro. That was just a promotional I'm not, album. I'm not arguing you that. Know, you know good and well. I'm not arguing that. I'm, that I'm not thug, arguing that. I'm just saying. I'm saying future, thug, future style. Rap. Future style. Like, whether if you hate thug it or love it. Thug did it right. No. Future style. Thug did Bro, right. That's Wayne's son. I don't know. Of, I don't know a line from lifestyle that Thug said. Thug, Bro, that's that's Wayne's son, and Wayne's still here. I don't. I. I, I I still give Thug a bit of his, a bit of his own man, bro. I'm not because arguing of that. What he's I'm, not, done. I'm not arguing that because, like because you said, what he, of what the influence, what he's done with the it. influence after he came out is impactful. I'm not arguing that, but I'm saying his successor is. is still here. What we are in right now, with the music we're listening to right now, if Thug was not here, this would not be accepted. No, none of it. No, the the trippy red. No, what the is, X -X 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 the, the Uzis, all that. He took the hit for him. I understand. That. So that so I understand that perspective. I'm not arguing that. I'm saying and then, and then to this day, there's only one he person. Got people, he got the people on the internet dancing. He got a song, bro. His album's platinum. Nigga, the last three is platinum. Who? Uh, uh, uh I'm not really big Martin on with platinum. Jeffrey, yeah, but I'm saying I'm not really big on him either because I'm a Kanye but you fan. Can't that's, deny my, his, that's my his impact. I understand what you're saying. But what I'm saying is when it reaches me, right. And then beyond me, right. I remember lifestyle. Yeah, I remember going to I remember going to the hookah bar across from Euclid, and hearing uh, the two bitches song that Thug had, and I never I wanted to know what it was. And I texted, I had to text Elliot asking, "Bro, what the fuck was that song?" You're right. You know how long since you know how so, so long since I've done that. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You see what I'm saying? And then after that. He done a couple mixtapes that was and, and then the bar. When you and then Jeff. But I see what you're saying. Slime, see. Like when you're that influenced, when you're that impactful as far as like your style, people are going to gravitate it, take it, and run with it. So it's like I think the thing that happened with Thug and Future is like people saw their style and was like, I want to do that. So like, rap is more of like a young man's game as far as like the radio yeah, and sure. the mainstream perspective. So like, for sure, when they hear somebody. Like, look how quick they grabbed Designer because he sounded like Future, but he was younger. You know what I'm saying? So they grabbed him like, you're the new Future. You know what I mean? So, like, 
Bro, that's why they pushed Panda like that. Bro, the reason why they grabbed, the reason why Kanye signed. I'm not talking about, yeah, I'm talking about the, 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 the hip hop community. Oh, okay. Like the mainstream, like the, the radio. The reason why they grabbed that song, it was like, Panda, Panda. Because they were like, okay, this sounds like Future, but he's younger. So it's like, we'll gravitate towards that because it's a younger man's game on the radio and mainstream. I'm going to just go through these Nicki Minaj songs oh my God. because this is not right. <laughs> ah, yo. <laughs> this is this is incredible. <laughs> Like her accolades are incredible. I love this Nikki, bro. I love Nikki. I love Nikki. I got 15 daughters. I love Nikki, bro. Roman's Revenge, Did It On Him, Right Through Me, Fly, Moment for Life, that, Check It Out, Black, bro. That's Pink Print. Will I ain't, bro. Oh my God. Okay, I'm, I'm done. That's Pink Print. I'm done. I'm, this is the first album. Hey, you say that's a classic. This is the first. Yeah, her first two is her first two is her first commercial albums were classics because of the what the what they seeded and brought up out of the roots. What they what the plant was. And she was being like, she wasn't trying to be over sexualized. Bro, yes she was she being was, like bro. a rap superhero. Bro, yes, she was. She was rapping like a superhero. Yes, she was. Bro, she didn't start switching at it until like after the second album. The first two albums, bro, she did the, the whole lollipop little Kim picture thing that she did. Where her whole, right. her, that's her whole, her, I don't want to use the word, but her whole, her whole fat mama was just sitting right there. Like, come on, bro. Yeah, bro, bro. That was before the album dropped. I guess maybe I'm using rap superheroes a bad. She was trying she to was help trying, be, She was trying to I understand be on that what you're saying. Because things. once she blew up and realized her impact, she started shifting. But I'm saying to the sexualizing. No, she was sexualized to begin with. That's what I'm saying. Bro, bro I've but been watching she her. She didn't promote it that way. I, when I when I we watched her that way. when I watched her, bro, but she didn't promote it that this way. Is, this is back when to she was the, on Ellen, bro. She didn't promote it that this way. This is back to the come up when she was Nikki the Ninja when she was skinny and rapping on the steps, bro. Before she got all the implants and stuff, she was just rapping. Then she got with Young Money. Before she got with Young Money, she was fucking with Gucci in there. The Gucci. And then she was in the Bricks video, and they made her a waitress. Bro, if you was nice at rapping, they would have made you a feature, my nigga. They was trying to sexualize her. Then she got with Wayne and became the mistress, Nikki the mistress. And she was always making these bars and flips about fucking Wayne. I'm on the plane with the Wayne. Like, bro, she was over-sexualizing. Then she blew up. The market saw that she was the only female rapper that women looked to and girls looked to. So she starts shifting it towards the pop after the second album. Then Cardi come out years later. Now, bro, you said didn't Cardi come out? Years later. Bro, do you know how long? Hold on. When did Cardi come out? Like 2016, 17, something like that. Nikki had ran, the, ran half a decade by then. Factual, that's half. We talking about the whole decade, bro. And asterisk, and asterisk because uh, Rod Digger was in jail. When Remy tried to come back, she blackballed Remy. That's why Remy dissed her, and she lost that battle. That I, I'm not. I said that. I said that Young Ma could body Nikki, plain and simple. But mm -hmm. Nikki's influence, mm -hmm. and what no matter what these females say. It's too late, cause like when Nikki says, "All these bitches is my son." She's right. <laughs> that shit is it's factual. That shit is facts from the head to the toe. So I have to give her. She's audible. She mention. got six, like, bro. They gave me. They gave me. They gave Cole six platinum albums. Nikki got six or four double platinum albums and a verse on my twisted rapping better than Jay. She got away with a Jay verse. I'm not denying all that, but I'm saying her run was the first half of the decade. Once she started getting pushed back, she dwindled down, bro. After Remy came back and challenged her, she lost Sheether. Then Cardi started getting all that love that she used to get, and she couldn't handle it, bro. We saw how she... Oh, she didn't look... Everybody... Okay, if she lost the Cardi war. The rap battle, she didn't lose. No, she bodied her on motor, whatever. She bodied her. I'm not... I'm going to keep it tall with you. She bodied her on motor... Was it motorsport? Yeah. Bodied her. Bodied her. So what are we talking about? But she didn't, bruh, my point is she bodied her because she knew she had to. But that I respect that because she understood the way was, the pendulum was swinging. People was kind of, that whole, bruh, when you're at the top, you know, when you're at the top, people don't want to see you up there all the time. Yeah, you got to protect it. You got to protect it. And when you protect it, you look selfish. You know what I'm saying? 
because people it's the vantage point you know what i mean when you when i'm down here and i'm looking up at you i'm looking at you like you got everything blah, blah, blah. but when i when i'm up here and i'm looking down at you i'm like you want what i got so i'm not knocking that i'm just saying bro look at drake when new niggas come on drake takes them on he was still they flow he was still there. Thank you. He was still there. Can we, can we, can we like, come on, I got you. Come on, percent. let's record. He either fuck your bitch or steal your flow. That's what Drake do. Like, but, okay, there we go. But like, Nick, Drake is not trying to. He's not taking no <laughs> niggas on no wings. No. He is there if to you, get their bitch. If Drake and fuck with you, you gonna be in the OVO workshop and you gonna be in this garage writing songs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hell no. Yeah, chef. Like you gonna like be the, party uh, next door. Rock, you gonna be giving all your best shit. It's gonna make his album. He might give you a feature on it, and that's it. But Nikki didn't handle no, it right, bro. She should have just welcomed everybody in. Like, bro, I'm the queen. I've been the queen. Let me. No, sir. But she ain't doing no, like sir. that. No, because that's old school ball. I'm just saying, and bro. The kids need that. Bro. And then on top of that, bro, that made a lot of these other female rappers tighten up, level up. Yeah, but it also made them I come like together. That. It made them come together, and no, she looked sir. like she was on the outside. Bro, women stick together. Females are about unity, unlike us men. Now, bro, now, bro, I don't like, fall for all that. Bro, they've been like that. <laughs> Trust me. I don't fall for all that crap. Trust me, bro. Women been on some unity. I, I, I was raised by five, six women. I, I still don't believe that crap, bro. It's all a facade. <laughs> They all talk about each other. It's all fake. I'm not arguing none of that. that. I'm not. I'm not me? arguing none of that, bro. I'm not arguing none of that. I'm saying in certain perspectives, they stick together. Do they critique each other in private? Of course. I'm not going to dismiss that, but I'm just saying. I don't bro. think. I don't think that Nikki had to do shit. I think that if Nikki had so? to do anything, it was protect her ass. And I feel like Nikki, when it came to rap, handled it. She lost a couple, cool, yeah. but she lost a couple to people that were like. Just like Drake, bro, you're you're not gonna beat everybody. Uh, Drake, bro, you're not gonna beat Red Cafe. You're not gonna bro. beat everybody. You're not gonna beat Joey. You're not gonna beat Push. You're not gonna beat Malice, Malice. You're not gonna beat. You're not gonna beat none of those guys who are just who put the pen down and know how to create something uh, to, to go against you in that in that art form. He he's not gonna do that. Same thing with Nicki. Any of these guys besides Kanye or Eminem and Wayne is losing that. So you, so you think Kanye, so. Because he has charisma. Kanye is the only person that Jay-Z, that Jay-Z struggles with when it comes to songs. And I'm not saying that he wins every time. No, he but has a, he, because he, of he has, Kanye's charisma. He can, he, can, he can draw you into his verse just without rapping. Like, like, like niggas in Paris, I argue that all the time. Who had the better verse for real? And you can, it's, when you go bars versus charisma, it's, it's like oil and water. It don't mix. It's like you can't add it up. You can't compete. Like we we go we can go bars because that's rap. That's the rule. But Kanye's verse, bro, is like ridiculous. It's more memorable in that song. It's more memorable because if you if you break it down, the most memorable part of Jay's verse on that song is a Biggie line. It's the flip of the Jackson Jordan Tyson that he did on Victory. Tyson, yeah. So when you when you think of Jay's verse, even though he has some crazy lines like the whole. Nets can go 0 for 82, and I look at you like this shit gravy. That shit was crazy at that yeah. time, you know. But like you said, like, he said, yeah, can we get married in the mile? I told her that you got a bobble for you. Like, the way his energy and, like you said, his charisma is very, it's it's very intriguing to the point you just want to hear what he says next. Even if you, like, don't agree with take, it. Like, take that song and then go to, what's the song that uh, Big Sean uh, wrote for them? And threw it on and threw them on there. Uh, click. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yep. Yeah. Now you look at now. Jay Z was like, "All right, well, if you go throw me, I won't go first. Yeah. So Jay Jay went or no Jay went second. Sean I Jay, yeah, I think Kanye. Yeah, and so the, those two verses, bar wise, Jay Z had the better verse. Yeah. Character and charisma wise, Kanye leveled him up with that Kim line. Mm -hmm. Off the bat, yeah, and I feel like like that's the only nigga that I feel like that's the reason why he's shelfy. I feel like that's the reason why he bought his masters. I feel like all that shit was to <laughs> was to be like, I, I I'm being real, bro. I'm like I, I see it every every song, even from Never Let You Down, bro. Like the Never Let You Down verse that Jay Z spit was like blueprint esque. Bro, and then Kanye came with look with the accident in my left eye first, Leah, and I'm just like, 
And that was, I'm just so like, small meal, I, not a Leah must die. I guess I got like, an age of work. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Every time, every yeah. time they get on the song. Yeah. Even the Diamonds verse, Kanye's Diamonds verse was character, but Jay Z killed him out with the with the beans in my wheel and, business, and all that man, shit. I'm out of like, business, oh man. Let me finish my business. Oh my god, yeah, I was just like, you're right. And and, it, and and like Jay even did that with DMX. Like he shelved DMX when he was the president. Yeah, because he knew what the index meant to him as far as competition. <laughs> yep, Jay's good at seeing that. Jay's a petty nigga. He's my goat, but he's a petty nigga, bro. And sometimes you gotta be petty to be at that level where he's at. So I get it, but like, nah, man. I, I think it's master petty. Beyond it, the, the the sub the way he sub, you gotta be petty. You know what I'm saying, like. But nah, I feel what you're saying though. Like I do think a woman should be on there, but I just think Nikki. I don't like the way she ended it. <laughs> I don't like the way she Is she done? Bro, what if Nikki come out again and, and go platinum? What are we saying at this point? Just like Kanye. Kanye is probably going to go down as the greatest to ever do it because of the different, the differentials in his sounds and his albums and how they all influenced and went number one. So how many classes does like Kanye have? Nine. And they all sound different. How many what? Classics. Oh, how many classics? I probably would only go like two, maybe two or three. I would probably go the I'll probably go the dropout. I'll probably go late registration, and then I would probably I, well I don't know if I would do the dropout. Bro, the first I might five, do bro. The first five. I don't now now that time has passed. I don't put all those there. I don't put out like the dropout. You about to make me put I on my bear hat. Was, I'm about to put on my college bear. I think the dropout I'm about to put on my dropout bear time. mask because you're about to make me go there. No, I think the dropout was good for its time, but I think late registration is better than the dropout. Yeah. Period. Okay. I think late registration, then I would probably go 808s. And then I would probably go my twisted. 808s, if it wasn't for 808s, bro, we're not, I don't have auto tune on my computer. I understand that. But graduation? I think that was a like it was too much of a of a hype publicity album. I'm talking about like real classic hip hop. Like late registration to me might be his 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 no bro his no no no. See, see, here's the thing with Kanye. Kanye pushed that envelope to where you don't just say rap classics anymore. You don't do that. You say classic pieces of music. His first well, then five. Then you do that. Then then you then you got his five. His first five are that's what I'm saying. His first five. I'm saying his first five. I was there when yeah, College Dropout came out, bro. Bro, the, he brought back concept albums to a certain degree. He made it cool to have a theme yeah. and a concept throughout. Bro, before his mother passed away, it was supposed to be good ass job. It wasn't supposed to be no 808. It was supposed to be good ass job. College Dropout, late registration, graduation, good ass job. He made it cool to have a scheme and a concept throughout your whole entire project again. That was lost. Before, that was lost before College Dropout. It was lost. It wasn't accepted anymore, bro. Concept albums, full length concept albums, were not accepted like that on a commercial scale before College Dropout well, came I, back out. What's the next album came out before that? What? Ludacris. What album? It was after Word of Mouth. Where the Chicken and Beer. Was like that wasn't a concept the album. That was Chicken and Beer came oh, up after that. It's it's it's. It's back for the first time, word of mouth, chicken and beer, then red light district. It was chicken and beer. Chicken and beer had the chicken and beer had the uh the skits and the intros of the whole it's thing. It's not a concept, bro. It's not a concept. You mean like it, it the dropout? You mean like the entire dropout? It, it was an aura. Yes, I'm talking about the entire from the from the 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 skits, the, the uh my degrees. I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do with yeah. my degrees. My dad died and gave me his degrees. Like every song tied into the emotion and what he went through as he went from a college dropout to a producer. And then he continued that with late registration and graduation was graduating to a different sound, stadium sounds. 808 changed the game. And My Twisted Dark Fantasy is his most concise album. But that's five classics right there. Five. I definitely, no. I definitely agree. He got the five classics. Five out the gate. Uh, the only person even only person close to that is Kendrick. 
Section 80, Good Kid, Mad City, to Pimp a Butterfly. Section 80 don't count. It's an album. What you mean? It's not. A, it's not a mixtape. It's an album. All right, the Kendrick, uh, the Kendrick Lamar EP. That's not an album. Or when he tried to do Carter Four, where he wrapped over, we wrapped over all the Carter Three beats. That's not. That's those are mixtapes. Section 80 is an album. That's a debut. It just Good Kid was a debut on the mainstream, but TDE debut is Section 80, which most people say that's one of his best albums, bro. That's his best album. And then you got Good Kid, Mad City, which is a classic. Then you got To Pimp a Butterfly, which changed the whole genre. And then you got Damn. But okay, okay, right here. You said it changed the whole genre. This is my thing. Cole has no influence. What you mean? Who? Cole? Oh, right now. What do you mean? Like, what artists has followed his style? That's out right now. This whole goddamn Dreamville camp. You know, just as good as I know, that no one could do group projects anymore and then it, it don't work. But they, they're making it work, though. I don't work, care though. how good they are. It's not going to work. But they make it work. You can't deny that. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. You know this. Sure. How many groups have tried it? Young Money did it. Blank. Right. T-Pain and them did it. Nappy Boy. Blank. Kanye did it, good music. Wah. But bro, uh, they on what uh, they Joe Button and they them. on a what Wah. third? They on a what third Revenge of the Dreams thing compilation project? It's not, bro. It's not even better. Than, it's not what they have done is not even better than what Cruel Summer. And I like Cruel Summer, but stop it, King. No way. Stop it. Stop it. I like Cruel no. Summer. I like it no. Too. No, nope. right. having Kanye on it alone in his bag like he was. No way, Kanye. Not, call that on Kanye level. Not even close. Wait, wait, not even close. We're not arguing that. I'm saying he. You're saying he has no impact. I'm saying he has impact because the what the. I'm saying you said he influences Cam. I'm talking about the the other two. Like Drake has influenced rap singing. Kendrick has influenced social content. Hip hop. Right. Yep. Nicki has influenced. Female, Women. female rap. Thug has influenced what's on the radio. Lil Baby, those guys right now. Yep. Who has Cole got that's out right now that's not in his camp? But see, here's the thing. You see what I'm saying? Like, like, I'm not arguing what you're arguing. I'm saying there's different levels of influence. Cole has made it basically a lane of where it's back to. Yes, oh. he created his own bubble, but through inconsistency and through the fanship loving him for his inconsistency and giving him passes. If Drake, if Drake did the stuff that he did, they would they would hate Drake for it. He wouldn't be arch of the decade. Okay, hold on, hold if on, Drake on. had the same Let, rollout, this. This. did the same numbers at the same time, he would not get the same love as Cole gets. Let's, he wouldn't get a pass. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. All right. Drake's first album versus Cole's first album. I got Drake. I got Ken. I mean I got Cole. On, on the first album? Yeah, long story short. All right, cool. Second album, Take Care versus Board Center. Take Care. I'll take Take Care. Okay. Third album, where it gets a little spicy. We got Nothing Was the Same, and then you got Four Seals. Four Seals. Yeah. But there's nothing, but right. But if you go to the next album, what Drake did on that next album is killing everything that Cole ever attempted. What's what view? Because that's Drake's best that's Drake's best body of work. Views? Yes. But I love views. No. No. What do you think it is? Nothing was the same? Yes. I, I it, 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 it's, it's too hard. It's too hard. It's but it's right there, right there. Views is age enough. way better. Nothing was the same was accepted as soon as it came out. Facts. All right. So if we go, but you're right, because views is better than for your eyes only. And then King of Diamonds was next. K KOD. <laughs> uh, KOD. Uh, Scorpion. I'll take KOD. Yeah, of course. So look, we're having debates. The Scorpion was rushed. We're having debates right there. This is this is debatable. This isn't like a wash. This is debatable. Right? We can agree it's debatable. Yeah, album wise, but I think that there's other things that Drake has obviously done that has influenced. Right, and even so is Cole. Cole. 
So it's cold on a different scope, though. It's just a different scope. It's not the same scope or the same. Right, but right, but I like Cole has platinum out. Like Cole, like, like, like Cole to me should be where Drake is, without as without as much accolades. I just I don't think but he wants that. Of, I don't think he wants it though. I, but I said without the accolades, right, so right. The accol without some of those accolades, he's not as well. He's not. He's never going to be public. Cole is always going to be more so underground. I understand that. But what I'm saying is, if you got to be like, you got to be so underground that it, you go, you hit both, you hit both sides of this thing now, this new spectrum. Right. After 2010, the musical timeline get, became an alternate timeline. Right. Now, real hip hop, now radio hip hop and entertaining hip hop is what is accepted more so than the original timeline. Mm -hmm. So I think that Drake knew how to drive this road, and I feel like Cole is still on that timeline. And that's cool, but you got to know how to go both ways. And the four artists that I put went both ways. And they influenced too much of what's going on. Take, way too much of what's going on. I take Wale. Like, Young Thug is literally the reason why Khaled's albums sound the way they do now. Khaled's albums used to be New York, Cool, The Runners, uh, all Rick Ross's producers. Now it's all like Young Thug. Now it's like and the little babies like, and the uh, babies producers. You want these random collabos to hit the charts? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Because like now it's it's that energy. And then he did the. I don't even like talking about the album he did with Chris Brown because it was bummy. But he did an album with Chris Brown that it, that ended up being a lot better than I thought. I thought it was gonna. I mean, when you do. I mean, what do you what are you expecting? I'm not I'm not expecting much out of that. No. I'm expecting it to be good. No. Do some numbers, but it it wasn't that bad. It it was kind of like the the Janae Aiko and Big Sean uh, CD where it was like eight songs or something like that. Yeah, it wasn't long, so it wasn't bad. You know what I'm saying? But like, I'm not when Thug is he's not gonna give me crazy bars until you start reading his lyric videos. Yeah, but like, if 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 it's Thug, if if Thug wasn't here, bro, like the radio is still Kanye and Wayne and Drake future. and Nicki. And future, yeah, it's that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Thug got little skies and little peep, and I think Thug these, is all like these little little. Thug is like a blunt that you take and you mix half of it with Wayne and half of it with Future, and you just roll it up and spark yeah. it up. And sometimes you get Future vibes, and sometimes you get Wayne vibes. You know what I mean? Which I think has mm -hmm. made his influence so world renowned because he touches on so many different things. Not to mention whether if you like it or not, his polarizing style as far as like his image, you know, whether yeah, I, I would go, go ahead. that's one thing Future doesn't have, like Future doesn't have that polarizing um, fashion perspective of him. Like he's just, when you, if you don't talk about Future's music, you talk about either the lean or how many kids he has, you know, that's, yeah, that's, what I'm that's saying. it. Like, you know, when it comes to Thug, you may not like his music, but you may like his fashion. You may not like his fashion, but you may like his music. It's polarizing. You, it's one of the two. You draw to it, you know. And whether if it's you think, okay, he's he, he sound like Wayne on this song, or he sound like Future on this song, or he sound like Thug on this song, or do you hear somebody who sounds like him? And like you said, having artists like Gunna, like a little babies, like you know the people that obviously are are under him, came up under him, worked he worked with these artists younger on. Yeah, he, he kind of has like that Gucci feel. Like, yeah, I, if anybody, I would argue. And this is crazy for me even saying it. I will argue Gucci needs to be on there, just off the simple. He gets an honorable mention. He gets an honorable mention for last decade. No, I think this decade because this decade he reinvented himself, and that's where the trailblazing you saw from the producers to the rappers from 2010 on. You can't name a producer or rapper who hasn't been popping who doesn't have a, a tie with Gucci. You can't. You can't. Even the people you name, Nicki, Drake, got ties with Gucci. Any top producer, sure. any top producer you name from 2010 on has ties with Gucci. For sure. And all the new artists that came up, especially from the South, either are on his label, like a Pooh Shiesty, or have done songs with him and hold him in high regard. You're 21 Savages. All these young artists who are now popping, they look at Gucci like a forefather. So, but, but he was more consistent in the previous because he went to jail. All the time. I'm not saying I, musically he's had that impact now. I'm saying influence alone. He's had that impact where 
You ain't buying it. No, no, I agree that Gucci's had the influence, but I think that you have to have both. Yes. Yes. And that's why, like, when Gucci in the previous decade was dropping big stage every week. Bro, I don't give a damn. I was so upset about that whole Jeezy conversation because I was like, you niggas ain't old enough, bro. Gucci was first, bro. Like, he was the first fat-ass rapper on YouTube that I saw doing rap videos, just chain on, sweating, you know, doing his thing. Like, that. I was, like, so astounded by that. I will, I will say that Gucci made it cool to be a fat hood nigga. Like, yeah. like a fat get-money hood nigga. Like, he made it cool to be that, like. Like, I remember that video where he recorded that uh Puerto Rican chick, but she blacker than a Pepsi. I remember that video where he was, like, in the middle of the room. bro. and I, I used to watch that video, like, four or five times a day, bro. Like, this nigga killed this shit, bro. <laughs> Stupid. That niggas was arguing Jeezy, like, I'm like, bro, Jeezy's dope, but he came after Gucci. Like, Gucci's mixtapes were serious back in the day, and I mean... Bro, they were in every, they were banging every trunk. At the time when you need to have two twelves in your trunk, Gucci CDs and Rocco and some other people at the time. Yeah. Bro, they was it. Nah, but they was it. I'm still taking Jeezy over Gucci though. You know what I'm saying? Um, there's nothing <laughs> with all that being said. <laughs> I've still got Jeezy over Gucci because all that impact shit is cool. But like you said, bro. You could add, you could take, I swear to God, you could take all of Gucci's songs, all of them, from the day he started rapping to right now to as we speak. You can mix them in the blender, okay? Blend them up. Add them, get your favorite playlist out. And all I need is Jeezy's Trap or Die or one, Thug 101, and I'm smoking your boots, okay? <laughs> I'm smoking your You're boots. You're not. Smoking your boots, You're not. okay? I we saw him in the uh, verses. He got smoked. No, he no, but he didn't even play his hit songs. He didn't play the club hits. He didn't play uh, Bruh, he didn't, uh he didn't, what's that one song called? He didn't, oh, fuck. he didn't play none of his classic hood shit. I understand all that. But the point is, he still got his boots smoked. And he would have lost. He still he got his boots smoked. Bruh, he would have lost if he played that. He got his boots smoked though. That's not what happened. I'm still going with Jeezy. I respect Gucci though. I have a newfound respect for him, bro. But musically, when it's not even close, like I, I, I can still give money to Jeezy right now. I can't do that. Bro, he didn't even play shirt off. I didn't. I'm not his DJ, bro. <laughs> you know, but yeah, that tells me right there. I'm not his DJ. That tells me right there. <laughs> you know, you know the DJ. damage that would have done. <laughs> you know, shirt off and some of them other the other club records still to this day. Um, what else? Um, he didn't even do black tea. Like, come on, son. No. Come on, man. Where's the black tea at? I was waiting for that. <laughs> I was ready to act ignorant to it. Like, he even... Nah, nah, man. Nah, Jeezy. Jeezy don't. He didn't even really get into his bag. He couldn't, man. He was too focused on that nigga Jeezy, man. But he had... Hey, he won the war, though. Ooh. Gucci. Yeah, you're you right. Because more people walked away talking about him than they did Jeezy. And, 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 well, shit, for me... For me, bro, like, I'm just going to be real. If I was about that life, like they, like them niggas is, and 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 I'm basically reading the story as you send someone to kill me and he get his ass Batman out there, Jeezy. and then I come to you and rap, rap to you about it, I don't say, like, look, we could be grown men all we want. <laughs> That's fine, bro. I, the thing about it is, bro, oh. if I, like, if I say that shit to someone, who it was they homie, I can't expect them not to react tremendously aggressive towards me. Yeah. But the fact that he did that in front of a million people, just to make sure, I fuck with Gucci off of that alone. Well, because to me, that's crazy that, bro, a dude, got a, dude sent someone to kill him, and then he got his ass whacked and stop, sent him back in a box and like, then laughed at his face like, I'm still standing, like that. sucker. That's that's it. That's the ultimate. That's it. What? That's a win. Like that's that's the. That's like that's like going to war and cut the general's head off and just bringing the general's head back to the. That's like what they did in uh the army of the dead with uh what's the name? They took old girl's head 
and he wanted to bring it back. He yeah, wanted he, old girls he in. Put the head, he put the head on the spike to send a message. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, send a message. That's what he was trying to do. Like, hey, don't fuck with me. I send back pine boxes. Hey, I fuck with I that. send bodies back. <laughs> I fuck with that. Man, you got to feel stupid to do that, too. And <laughs> Jeezy just sitting there like, bro, I really did send a nigga over here to kill him, but it didn't work, and he killed uh, him. And so good. So Jeezy got to feel that guilt, and he laughing like, bro, that was the ultimate moment for me. I, I can't. I don't think people really realize what they were watching. Like, that's, bro, that reason, that altercation is the reason why Drake doesn't do TR, TNA and TRL battles, bro, mm -hmm. is because it will get like that no. quickly. No, you can't do songs. You can't do that with Drake. Drake won't allow it. See what I'm saying? Drake be, Drake be putting that hype out there like, I'm a, I'm a freestyle battle. But I'm like, nigga, you have to have presidential security out there. Snipers, you have to have everybody out yeah, there. Of course. Bro. Of course, it's Drake. You work too much money. Y'all might, might have to have a plexiglass. I'm saying he's a brand. In between he's a brand. They're going to protect their brand, bro. They're not going to. Yeah. They're not going to. You feel me? Nah, they're going to do that. Nah, I can't. They would never do that. Right. They be talking like it's gonna happen. It's not happening. You're right, Kevin. You're right. I mean, it's not happening. I wish. <laughs> I would like to see Drake take the L. <laughs> All right. Cause, bro, like I'm with real rap, and I think that it's okay to do this entertain rap, guys. For all my people that's watching, if you are entertain rapper, kudos to you. Okay. What's it? But don't come this way. Thinking that shit gonna fly. What's the entertainment rapper? Because you're gonna get your ass barred up real quick and embarrassed. What's that? What's that? If you don't learn from Drake and these other people that that shit don't work, I'm telling you, it don't work. What's the, what's the entertainment? Stick to rap against, what's the entertainment rapper? You know, rapping? Katy Perry's and shit. What is that, though? Like, what is the entertainment rapper? They forget. They forget, bro. You get in the, you get in the realm of your own where you, you start dealing with your own people and they create a hex, bro. The WandaVision, bro. They in that, <laughs> they thinking that. They seeing shit. I, hey, bro, I live in reality. I don't live in no fake shit, bro. Yo. I see it for what it is. Yo, this nigga said Wanda. They get these 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 guys, bro. They get in this. That's why I don't like. They put a Mount Rushmore up, bro. Already, they had Dirk and some other people on it, and I, I almost lost my oxygen. I had to be on oxygen because I was like, bro, that shit is just ridiculous. These guys ain't even been in water long enough for their fingers to wrinkle. Well. Bro, you gotta understand there's different subgenres of music now. In a different era. Don't still don't fly. Still don't fly. There's two there's two genres of music. There's real hip hop and there's entertainment. There's only two. The rest is underground. So what about trap music? Entertainment. That's, so so you, you would categorize that as entertainment. Now, the trap music we grew up on was trap music. That was real shit. That was real. That was real trap music. Nowadays, it's a lot of these kids, bro. If you ran up on them, they're gonna react off of them tricking themselves into thinking that they're really about that. Cause they're kids, they're children. These that like you said, it's, it's a kid sport now. So mm -hmm. like, what when we was rapping in like twenty, what was considered the rap age is now like sixteen, fifteen, eighteen, and they're kids mm -hmm. with these pistols and these AKs, bro. When I was their age, I was trying to get some pussy. I was not trying to shoot nobody. And the camera like this. Now, now it's all this. Oh yeah, yeah. what you gonna say? They start. They start the video off like this. They start the video like putting a, putting the pole in your, putting yeah. a stick in your face. Yeah, you feel me? And I, and I ain't got no problem with the entertainment rap because it make money. You feel me? Right. So, I'm not gonna knock another man's hustle. But it promotes it genocide. Man. It promotes genocide. It's entertaining. But they were not ninety percent of the people who are doing trap music now. It's for entertainment and they're not really about it. Yeah. A lot of stuff is is all due off of views and it's plotted and yeah, people be getting killed out here because things get out of hand. People take it as reality. It's you're right. It's also these kids that are is like they're still young. Mm -hmm. Like when we was like, bro, when I when we was growing up, and if I had beef with another rapper, we're fighting in the club. I'm not shooting. Right. We're fist fighting. You might get jumped. There's no video. That's about it. Yeah, you're getting jumped. We're fist fighting, and there's no video, or it is. If it's it's all, you know, it's all hectic. Oh my god, I'm running. You know, it's all that. So right, not no world star. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Now it's 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 these like, and, and to be honest with you, bro, if you have the look, and you can pull it off where no one knows you, it works. So that's why I say like, yeah. ninety percent of these people who kind of do it. I'm not saying that they're not really bad or nothing. I'm not trying to discredit them. I'm just saying that a, like, the mindset is different. And if they had, like, if they were really about their business, 
they wouldn't escalate it to the point of shooting because they know they got money to make and things to do. You see what I'm saying? Those altercations can keep you out of events, out of clubs, out of all type of stuff. It might spice you up on the internet, but as far as making money, it halts it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, yeah, there's never no. That's my thing with the new gene. There's never no money in beef. You know, we was raised on that. You know, but right. There's no money in there's that. no money in that. You know, that's how we was brought up. So I understand your perception because the younger kids nowadays they make like. If I'm a DJ, right, and I tell five rappers between the ages that you said, 16 and 18, 16 and 20 or something, to bring me your best song, how much, how much money you want to bet one of those songs is going to have some type of smoking on a dead eye, ah, I killed a nigga, I spun the block, you know, th right. there's going to be that type of energy. You're going to have to literally sit the niggas down and be like, yo, bring me a song. That, that doesn't involve you killing somebody or naming that you killed right. somebody or your homie shot somebody or you're smoking right. on this dead kid. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't right. even get a record like that because you'll take a record, play it, and not even knowing. Like, that, uh, them Florida boys that, that just that went viral where they was on the golf course yeah. singing that, you know, they singing all these kids' names that, that actually died. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. like, People are singing the song, like you said, they're jokingly, it's like it's a joke. Like now, saying, I'm not even going to say the boy's name because it's disrespectful, but saying you smoking on right. a person's name is now accepted culturally in our our, right. our realm of music. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember back then, bro, like certain lingo was specific to certain areas. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, yeah, you can't say you that. Only you, heard, gotta just... you only heard certain lingo if you listen to certain music. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then right. you would pick up on the lingo through the music. You know what I'm saying? Right. But so that's the same thing these kids are doing now. Like when they heard Chicago dudes talking that type of spicy, it was like, oh shit! Like, all right, yeah, like I'm smoking on so and so, so and so, and now it's like. Right. That terminology it now is accepted. Like before, bro, before Chicago kids, nobody you didn't say ops. You right. didn't say none of that. You they go to ops. You never said that. Right. You know what I'm saying? And everything wasn't gang. Everything wasn't squad. Everything wasn't white right. cat. Like it was. It, right. it the Chicago wave took over, and all these young kids adapted that mindset. So like you said, now they start the video, their kid got the video with the strap, even the yeah. video like this. So the whole video is 30 niggas in the apartment because they watch Chief Keith do it and blow up. So now you got 100 niggas in the apartment, shirt off, drunk, on Molly, high, all holding guns, all yelling, screaming, and that's the wave now. So, bro, hey. it's not, bro, think about it. When's the last time you heard a dope rap girl song? When's the last time you heard a song where a nigga just Rap was suave, was player about getting a girl. Now it's shut up, bitch. Pop this pussy. Fuck my niggas, bitch. Oh, you a hoe. Oh, I'ma fuck you on the first night, bitch. Oh, I'ma fuck you and not talk to you no more, bitch. And even like the songs that women listen to through rap, it's all bitch this, bitch that. Pop this pussy, hoe. Yeah, hoe. Yeah, hoe. Yeah, hoe. Like you can't even like play it with your girl. Like you gotta play Drake with your girl. If you try to play anything else, it's like right. completely disrespectful. Like it's to the point shorty gonna be like, yo, turn this off. Like what is it supposed to be doing? I don't to even me? I don't even listen to new music. Like if I do, Bro, you there's only like one guy I like, and that's Nav. And he's not he don't really talk about genocide a lot of killing. Murder. He don't talk about a lot of yeah, he talk more so about how he just fresh looking all the time and you know he can get a bitch or whatever, but I I would I I'll, I'll take that. He make vibe music. I feel like I feel like I could be I could be that. Right, right. If it's I get more some attainable. money, look good. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, but when it comes to like shooting, like my like my, I be telling people all the time, I, my Rover video, bro. People people commented in that shit, bro, and said, bro, you hard. And I said, yeah, bro, I got a Nerf gun. Jordan wearing a fake. Party City chain. I'm like, bro, I just did this because I did this because <laughs> I I wanted to venture out and do something that I don't normally do. Right. And I shot the video like that. So like in the in the studio, it wasn't supposed to be about you hard, you this, you that. And they took it as, bro, you hard and all this other stuff. And I'm just like, bro, you know who I am. They took bro, it as satire. Like, I'm not even that guy. They took it as satire as you were making fun of the hardcore rapper in the persona that is being perpetuated yeah. through rap music. So they yeah. when they when they're saying it like that, I think that's how I would have digested it.
But I mean, just even from that point, like because they're just so accustomed to either you're killing somebody, or uh, you drink lean, or you pop pills. You know, like like I said, there's no more like straight up. There's no more get money songs. What's a get money song? Right. <laughs> ain't no, ain't no get money song. We had wild get money songs. We had wild. We had cream. We had uh, Junior Mafia. Fuck bitches. Get money. We had plenty of them joints, yo. We had 50s. I get money. We had, yo, we had plenty of joints where it was like, get money. Get money. Like, I don't care how you do it. Just get money. Like, <laughs> like we get money. Just get money. Like, and then it went from like, to get money to like, rob niggas for money. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like it went from like, it went from like, yo, I'm building with the plug to run off on the plug. Like, what? Right. What are we doing out here? Like, and now that's like perpetuated to the point where like that perspective is like common. Common. Like niggas is niggas is promoting dying, broke shit. It's what the F Ain't nobody talking about getting money and flipping it. They talking about robbing niggas. They talking about taking pills, sipping lean. And, and, and killing niggas or dying young. That's it. Right. Like I feel like I feel like the drug experience, the drug experiences, I think there's some I I do see I do get vibes of the real music sometimes. Through the drugs? In this in in the in the entertainment from the entertainment side. And like a lot of the drug influenced songs. Like who? And the reason I say that is because I've been there. We all have. But not to the point I ain't been there to the point where like I'm doing drugs to do the music, but like But you're doing some drugs of the because they, the music influenced you. So hold, let me ask you this question. You never sit lean? <laughs> No, no, I, I have, but I didn't sip lean and go to the studio. No, 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 no. But why was you sipping lean at that time? Because I sit lean at the, I sit lean, I sit lean at the high school. That's 08, right? Who was the biggest? I was. Who was the biggest artist? I was, I I was sipping lean in a, I guess you would say a, a social. Yeah, of course. It wasn't. Thing. It wasn't privately. It wasn't like a private. No, it wasn't like yo. I got my four and my my, my sprite. Nah, it was. It was like yo. You you around some niggas if they do it, I'll pour me up some. But you only tried it because it was cool. Because Wayne made it cool. But when I like, there was a time where I caught myself, like where I was. I wasn't off the lean, but like there was. I was in a shitty position in my life, and I was doing. I was off. I was smoking weed a lot, and I was drunk. And there's like a there's a space that you get to where that shit come out, mm -hmm. but it don't come out like these people want it to come out. It come out like it come out like how like you like uh what's the Uzi song uh uh damn it. I don't know the song names, man. It's just it's new music, bro. I don't know you. I don't know. You sit in front of a computer. Uh, I think <laughs> That's why I'm laughing because you got the you got the information right in front of you, nigga. Well, okay, twenty minutes. The song twenty minutes and EXO tour life. Right. I can tell that he like when you get when you get when it comes out like that, bro. Mm -hmm. It's natural. It's coming out your pores. It's a real you. You've reached a space where you you your feelings and your creativity are, are in line. You with laugh, each other. right, right, right. You know what I'm right. saying? Right, and that's and that's and, and that's an artist's prime. To be honest with you, that's right. Like when you do that, you, you because you might have time, but it's not on purpose. You might have time where, like, where you want to create a, a song or a vibe, but you you don't feel like you can do it. And then there might be right. times where you feel like you can do it, but you can't create it exactly how you feel like you right. can you can do it. So when it measure out, that's where the pinnacle of the artist prime comes from just the self-awareness of knowing, okay, what I can do and what I can't do. Who do I need a feature yeah. from? Who do I need to bring on this project? 
who do I need to call for, what type of beats do I need to do, what type of writing regimen I need to be practicing to make this project sound the way it sounds. That's where you come concise. And like you said, a lot of times the drugs play into the feelings and the creativity at the same time. And sometimes drugs bring a balance to certain artists. We're not going to act like mm -hmm. just not even rap, but in music in general, some of the best music yeah, comes yeah. from drug usage. You know, people, I don't want to just say white people, but people hold the Beatles to a high regard. And we already know what type of drugs they were experimenting with. Yeah. psychedelics you know we already know the things they were doing you look at people like you know uh jimmy hendrix who's highly revered as one of the greatest artists of our generation of all time and we already know the things he was doing cutting his forehead putting acid in his bandana going on stage tripping balls for hours <laughs> like mm -hmm. we already know about some of the things that were being done i mean we is well documented dr dre wasn't smoking until he got with snoop dog and then he made the chronic literally start smoking and was like yo let me make one of the greatest albums of all time because i'm high <laughs> Cause, yeah because i'm high, right? Cause I'm high. Right. like the, my thing about the drug i see it my thing about it is is i think that a lot of the like a lot of the kids they force it i don't about this think way? you get anything yeah i think this new era of kids and just a lot of people that try to record with me i think they i think a lot of people just in general they try to force that edge. And I feel like, bro, like, if you could, if, if I would rather, instead of force drugs on myself, I would rather put, put myself back in the stress that I was in at that moment to get to that moment organically. So you're saying, before I would, you're saying make yourself vulnerable again. Yeah, I would rather make myself vulnerable again than to, than to come in here and be like, I got a song ready and then get a couple shots in and then get, get right to the, you know what I'm saying? Like they're forcing that. And a lot of times, sometimes that shows me that it's worked for them at a point in time, yeah. but then they're trying to recreate it. And I think sometimes when you force it, it causes you to be sloppy or it causes you to, it, it don't hit. Like, that's why I said, you got to, they got to, they got to align themselves and it's got to be organic for it to really work. Mm -hmm. And I don't like in this new age of recording of where a lot of that freestyle, that stuff is forced. Because look, and I don't like it. Come, it come, look, it started. It started with Big and Jay, right? They're the ones who made it cool and popularized the whole. I don't write. Um, one takes. They made that like that's what that's what adds to their myth, their, their mythology. You know what I'm saying? Is, yeah. Yo, you know Jay don't write this shit, right? You know Jay don't write none of that. Like that's what adds to you know if Jay just wrote, would he still be revered the same way? As a whole fan, I can honestly say no. Like, because he's not one of the most intricate level MCs of all time. There's people who have more higher penmanship than Jay. But what adds to his pen and the wittiness and the way he structures bars is the fact that he just, it's all up here. That's what makes mm -hmm. it just the perfect trifecta of all of it. So then Wayne adapted that style once he started doing the Carter series. Remember, he has a song where he's literally ripping the notepad He's, okay, he's, yeah. he's, he's writing, he's, he's rapping, and he's ripping the notepads out. Literally, you can hear the, you can hear it. And he, and I'm not here to argue or say that he's lying, but I'm just saying, he documented and he professed that after that moment he stopped writing. So a lot of we all know Wayne is arguably the most influential artist of this generation. So everybody who felt like they wanted to rap like Wayne, be like Wayne, or be on or the same level or better than him, they emulated everything that they revered about him. So the tattoos, the, the style, the drug usage, and most importantly, what we're talking about now, the lack of writing, this whole freestyle, this whole flow, just let it, you know what I'm saying, come to you. You know, they watch Wayne, they watch a documentary of Wayne that's been edited, B clips taken out, and all they see is Wayne smoke a blunt, you hear the little, you know, lighter flick, and then he takes a blunt, and then he goes and gives you this immaculate verse, and you're thinking he just literally walked into the studio, smoked, and then got into the studio, walked into the booth, and just gave you just the illest shit you ever heard of your life, when actuality, there's a process to it. Like, if you watch him record his swagger like us in the hotel, he's literally like, the verses he started off with is not what he, it was not on the uh, finished product, you know what I'm saying? That's not the verse he used. Like, he even started, no one on that corner has swagger like, ah, 
church. Now I'm too fly for D Y. Like he had a whole different scheme he was going, and he stopped it. He was like, "Nah, I don't like that one." And then he redid it. Like it wasn't like, "Okay, yo, swagger like us, give me the beat, I got it." Boom, bam, bam. And he didn't just walk through the beat, and that's it. Like he kept taking he had mad takes, but. They watched that, and some people watched that and said, I can do it. And then some people said, it's okay to do it like that. Like, so I understand both sides of the spectrum. Like, I feel like if you go to the studio, you should have, you should have everything memorized. The only thing you should be working on is how you want to deliver it. Like, how you going to, how you going to project this energy to the people? That's the only thing you should be, quote unquote, having struggles with or adjusting. If you go to the studio, I'm not expecting you to walk in. If me and you go to the studio and, I, and you say, yo, I got this track. And I'm like, all right, bet, let's go. If you send me the track, if you told me about it a week ago and we go to the studio next Friday, I'm done. I'm ready right. to record. I'm not walking in the studio right. like, all right, bro, hold on. Yeah, hold on. Right. Yeah. Right. That and that's my thing. Like, no, I'm not, I'm not play it again. Play it from the top again. Let me, let me hear it from again. Like, like, my thing is, I feel like it's a pro it's all a process, like, bro, like, as an artist, before recording. Like, when I, I remember, like, I be telling people, like, when I first started recording, bro, or when I first started rapping, before I started rap, before, like, this is the thing, before I actually started recording, I think I was just writing. Of course we all. Raps. Um, Write it off the goddamn line to the next joint. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Scribbling so shit. I, like, a lot of the stuff that I see people go through, it's like they're trying to slide up an ice here when it comes to the process. This art form. Oh hell yeah! And I feel like that, like even though that that Wayne and Jay and Big and Pac can come off the head, and some of these other guys that can come off the head like that, they still wrote and knew how to write before they got there. Right, right. And a lot of these it's, people, it's mastering. they're not even writing. It's, it's ma you don't go from. Goku base form to Ultra Instinct. You just don't do that. Right. You got to build. Right. It builds up. So by the time they like, got to that point, like you said, they already mastered all the other crafts and styles of beforehand. Like you said, right. these dudes, you know like these dudes, like th those dudes you talk about, they come from an era where you had to memorize raps and be ready to rap on the spot. Like it's dip that's what separates the North and the South. Like in the South, back in the 90s, when you said I rap, guess what niggas wanted? Where's your tape at? You better have a tape ready. Right. You better have a tape. Right. When you when you tell a nigga, hey man, check me out, you better pop that trunk and it better be a tape, shirts, merch. That's how they did it in the South and in the West Coast on the underground scene. The East Coast was more so like, yo, I rap, spit some. And then yeah, once you spit, right spit there. something, yeah. they'd be like, okay, I got a man. My man down the block. I'm gonna go get my man. You go get your man, right. and then it starts a cipher. Then the cipher starts, and then the cipher turn into a battle. And then if it was really that crazy, somebody would pull out a camcorder, i.e. Cassidy and Freeway, will pull out a camcorder and be like, yo. And then that's how it happened. So it was different on each side of the spectrum. So if you're in the South, right, what I gotta know how to piece up a, a, a 42 bars for if all I gotta do is know how to make a bridge hook, eight bars, bridge hook. And then right. if I'm in the East Coast, why am I worried about giving you a dope four bar a, a hook or a verse that just eight and eight when I'm about to give you the best 60 bars you ever heard in your life? So it, it was different. So that's why the people's way people approach it is different. That's why today you can hear a dude say, yeah, I started rapping last year. I was in jail last year. And I start rapping, and now he's out here. Now he's outside. Now he's blowing up. And someone who probably been putting their pin down for 10 years is probably like, oh, 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 ready to knock, knock shit over in the background. You feel me? It's just, bruh, if you a hustler, I'm not going to be selling Reggie right now talking about, man, don't nobody want no Reggie? Right. Nah, nigga, niggas want exotic. If you ain't giving them what they want, why are you still hustling? So we rap is an ego thing. A lot of times it's niggas' egos that don't want to tell them, bruh, push your pen in a different direction. Bruh, showing your verses, bruh. It ain't always got to be a 16. Make it an 8. Make it a 4. Make it a 12. It ain't always got to be 
Every every bar gotta be lyrical, miracle, spiritual, put you in the lyrical, miracle. Like it ain't gotta be that every time. Bro, Kendrick's one of the most craziest pens and he has commercially accepted songs. You don't have but, to but at the same time, I feel like that Kendrick didn't cheat the process. He didn't. You could tell. You could tell like and that's the difference between the two timelines. And I'm not no, it's, I swear it's nothing against this timeline. But the entertainment timeline, bro, the mute like the music. There's, two, there's I grew up in two decades, the '90s and the 2000s. Right. I'm old enough to remember both, right. and music on all levels, yeah. not just rap, because because pop music was bigger than rap music in the '90s. Yeah, we didn't start taking over to the late 2000s as far as like the commercial so, music, right. right? Right. We were just a subculture. So my thing is, my, right. My thing is, is that when they when when they try to slide off an ice hill, and when you're cut when you're you don't write first to get to the level where you can kind of start pulling things from the ethos because have your, have your brain has worked. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? You just don't say it, it, it's just so crazy that you say that because niggas really think you just take a blank canvas and just no. What happens right. is you know like you might you might be like you might hear a beat and the first this is this is how I do it. You hear a beat. And the first four to eight bars is like your training wheels. It's like your train. It's like it helps you build the cadence. So you might right. mumble a couple of bars and see if it fit. And whatever sector it fit, okay. So whatever BPM, beat per minute, whatever that's going to allow me to do. Because you might have some forty twos. You might have eights in your mind, just straight out the gate, right? Then so you hear the beat and you like, okay, that flow ain't gonna work. Now, nah, right now, nah, let, let me mumble some different. <laughs> All right, yeah, that, that kind of fit. Let me let me follow that up. Da, 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 da. And next thing you know, you got four bars. So you'll take that four bar layout and build off of it. Now, some people like to try to ram and cram it, but if you really do it the right way, you'll build from it and transition in and out of it. So that way, when the beat come back on, all you need to hear is that first four, and it's like it's like you just like it's like you're starting a skateboard. It's like, oh, oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. And then boom, you take off. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you can't I think skip that, the process of the first four. And I feel like that there's a lot of people that skip this process. I see it. Almost 95% of this entertainment stuff is they skip the process. But in return, because I like, this. the reason I like Drake, the one reason I like Drake is because he talks about how he how he wants music to be in good hands. I, I commend that because a lot of people do not look at music like that. I, I look at music like that. That tells me that he came from an era where it's appreciated. Yeah. A lot of the new era doesn't appreciate music because of how they treat it, rushing the process. That's why the, a lot of the music that you have out is thin. And what I mean by thin is it's hot for right now. Like I have people telling me, bro, Pooh Shiesty, Pooh Shiesty. And there's nothing against Pooh Shiesty. But guess what? He hasn't even reached me. Like I, I, I get on YouTube every day. There's not a YouTube video that's hit me. There's not a sponsor that I've seen. There's not a song that I've heard. There's not, if it don't reach me, bruh, then that means that a nine times out of 10, well, just in general, since Drake and Kendrick, there has, and Cole, there has not been an artist that, that, that has came you out with them. music that, that, that you ain't got no with, choice. That has life expectancy. You ain't got no choice. They pull you into them. Like, bruh, when Drake came out, you didn't have to be on that soft, white skinned nigga rap, right. whatever. He pulled you into it. He was everywhere. You couldn't escape it. You couldn't say, right. nah, man, I fucked that nigga Drake, because he was everywhere. So just like you said, there's certain artists that still has it, like, rest, you know, God bless my baby, bro, but, like, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't know who Dirk was. Or none of these young dudes. I used to walk in his room, right. he on the, he, he playing 2K, he on the headset, and he got his phone going off. And he's listening to all that, and I'm like, who is this? And he's like, oh man, that's little Dirk. That's uh so and so. That's so and so. That's uh, so and so. You ain't heard of so and so. And like you said, I'm like, nah, nigga, like, <laughs> why can't we listen to them? You know what I'm saying? Like, no disrespect. Right. But it's not my right. time. Like, I'm not on that tight time. When I get my car right. and I spark up and I and I reverse out this motherfucker, I'm not thinking about spinning the block. I'm thinking right. about riding, <laughs> getting from point A to point B, <laughs> making my move. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, and, and getting back to the crib safely. It ain't got nothing to do right. with killing niggas, being killed, being outside, letting niggas know where I'm at, posting my location. It ain't got nothing to do with that. So when I hear right. that type of energy, it's hard for me to listen to it and gravitate towards it and be like, yo, now if there was one of these young niggas who was like, like I like, um, he's not even young, but like I like niggas who talk money. Like 
like mo- uh I like money bag yo. I like I like uh I like niggas who just talk money shit. Like get money. Like I don't really vibe with the whole and bro. I, I got my bro. I got straps. I have my license, bro. I get it. But it, it mine's to protect me and my daughters, bro. It's not to right. It's not to be online with it and and pulling the right. blazing in your face. Like it's not that brings attention to me. Like I would never want right. a nigga to think, yo, that nigga strap. I know he's strapped. I'm like, nah. Like I want my shit concealed, done. Like I tell niggas all the time. I'm like, bro, I was in Kentucky. Motherfuckers walk around there like they, like it's a cell phone up there. Okay? Yeah. So like you go down there, you're gonna see some shit that's gonna bother you. But everywhere else, people are just like, Oh yeah, I keep my joint. You know what I'm saying? So like I was just like, nah, man. Like, I no disrespect to them young niggas, because like you said, I'd rather see a young man right. getting money like that. Yeah, get what, money. What the other, you know, avenues present for them. Yeah. But like, if we they just, getting paid off that. I fuck with it. If you gonna get paid off of it, bro, I say run it until the to the milk comes dry. But just make sure that you don't get yourself killed and you you draw a line. And that's why I, I was like trying no to, one draws a line. Trying to trying to school bay bro on like, bro, I don't mind that you like these niggas, but don't do like I did. And believe these right. niggas. Like, right. don't believe these niggas. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's right. what I did. I believed them. I thought it. I'm like, yo, when 50 came out, and I'm not saying 50 ain't like that, because he's proven he is. But when 50 yeah, came sure. out, bro, you couldn't tell me that, like, everything that nigga said was not 100% facts. You couldn't tell me that. Because I genuinely was like, yo, this nigga been shot. This nigga still out here wilding. Nigga wearing vests to the songs. <laughs> like he's performing with a vest on Teflon. This nigga got bulletproof. Right? Nigga said his hat was bulletproof on heat. <laughs> nigga said I got a bulletproof hat. Bulletproof New York face. <laughs> nigga said, said Doc said if I get hit in the head, I fuck her, I'll get a concussion. But better than the hole in the head, right? Nigga like, bro, I was over here like this nigga had a bullet in his mouth. Like, bro, you couldn't tell me. That whatever that nigga said was not facts. I'm pretty sure niggas felt like that about Gucci. After he called his charge, niggas was like, oh yeah, Gucci's a realest, illest motherfucking killer gorilla. Like, so I get it. But at the same time, like, like you said, like these young kids, they are like, if I'm listening, if all day I'm listening to a nigga tell me to slide, 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 I'm outside, where the ops at, where the ops at, then what am I gonna do, bro? I'm not, right. I'm not about to go play Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> I'm about to be right. outside doing what the music said. Like, and then right. even like, even I brought up again money song, but even those to a certain point were detrimental because even back then that was the vibe. It was hustling, get money. So what was niggas doing? Selling work to our own people. Because niggas was telling them, I'm the dope man. I'm the pushing man. I'm Mr. Ice Cream Man. Niggas was telling them, yo, I'm this and I got here from doing this. So niggas start doing it. Right. It wasn't even no more like I'm hustling to feed my kids. Niggas was hustling because they heard another nigga tell them to hustle. And they start hustling. Like, niggas was in their 20s, had no kids, no responsibility, heard a nigga and was like, yo, okay, that's what I want to do. So it goes both ways. It's just like, you got to just accept it for, like you said, entertainment rap. Yeah, you got to and keep it that way to keep make it. sure you get your money and keep living. Keep bro. living, bro. You feel me? Like, all, like, all that excessive they, shit. They, Mm-mm. That's why. It gets to the head, bro. We that's drop what like happens, flies. bro. It gets to the head. We drop like flies, bro. Because these niggas will see it, then they want to mimic it. So they like, that's my favorite rapper. Why would I not do what he's saying? Like, you got niggas taking pills, but niggas, that shit cut with fentanyl. You feel me? Like, it's not even safe to experiment with no more. Like, at least when we was coming up, we could try pills, you know? Like, you could try a volume. You could try a, um, uh, uh, what was that other shit? Look, 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 look at my eyes getting big. <laughs> they gonna, they gonna think I'm wild on it. Nah. <laughs> yeah, we tried, uh, it was Xanax, uh, Valumes, um, Molly's. We tried those. We, but we tried them. We tried them. Like, it wasn't like right. we did them and they became the wave. It was like you tried right. them. Like, right. graduation night, like, uh, a party night or, like, type shit around certain people, certain environments. It wasn't like I got to wake up and eat two of them just to wake up. Right. Like, now it's like how niggas, I got to have a born to wake up. Now motherfuckers are like, I need three perks to wake up. 
you know, then they get to a point where they tolerance is so high that they got to start doing the other shit just to combat not being able to have that level of highness. It's crazy, King. But look, man, I got 15 kids in there, but I got to get up off here. You know what I'm saying? All right, man. I'm out, man. I'll holler at you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I know. Stay safe.